Why is there so much confusion around the subject of nutrition? Is there such a thing as an ideal diet? Is there such a thing as a species-specific diet? How can all of our so-called experts in nutrition be getting the same degree and then yet have such a different opinion on what is the ideal diet? Now, many of you guys are going to say, well, one diet doesn't fit all. That's why there's so much confusion. We're so much different. And yet, that's not really true. And at the same time, it sort of is. Just like saying that one diet doesn't fit all, that's a half truth. And what I mean by that is that we have two groups of needs. And if we don't understand that we have two groups of needs, then we won't understand when a truth is a half truth. Because it might be true with one of the needs, but you gotta consider both groups of needs. So that right there is the reason, my friends, there's so much confusion around the subject of nutrition because we don't know when we talk about food, we've got two groups of needs. Now, one of those groups of needs are based on a law of nature. It's based on the fact that we're living systems and we're subject to laws of nature, especially the law of cause and effect. Again, we're living systems. We need an environment to sustain us. And then it's the way we interact with our environment and the environment itself that determines the quality of our lives. We can call that our context. All those things we need there, the water, the food, the sunshine, the exercise, the sleep, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, all the ways we interact with our environment, our reproduction and everything in the environment itself, that would be our context. And the quality of our lives is as simple as understanding the quality of our context. And that has to do with just one group of needs. And when we look at this group of needs relative to our food, we have a species-specific diet. There's no doubt about it. Think about this, folks. We all know every animal fits in certain categories based on their anatomy. We've got about a dozen anatomical characteristics that determine if we're going to be a carnivore, an omnivore, an herbivore, a grainivore, or a frugivore. We are in the primate class, folks. We're in the frugivore class. That's the anatomy we've been giving, given. So we have one group of needs based on our anatomical limitations so that we can interact with our environment. I've got lungs because I need the air in the environment. If I was under the water, I'd need gills to get what I need. So we all have anatomy that's specific to certain types of foods. And yet you would think we would, that, that we know what all the other animals eat. Why don't we know what we eat? And why don't they feed that to us? Well, good point, case in point is look what we do to our poor cows. We know they're herbivores. They're not grainivores. They don't have crops and gizzards like birds who are the only animals designed to eat grains these cows are herbivores they got four stomachs they're designed to eat this grass and yet most of our cows end up eating corn and soy so they're not eating their species specific diet either which makes it even worse when we eat that because that's not part of our species specific diets and this gets complicated because there are two groups of needs the first one's based on the law of cause and effect but then what happens with the law of cause and effect, and this is what confuses us a little bit, there's a ripple effect. And this is where the effects become causes, as in the causal loop, and effects can actually become knowledge, as is, as in the knowledge loop. And the simplest way to illustrate the knowledge loop is one of the most common sayings everyone knows, experience is the best teacher. The knowledge of the consequences is more important, or the experience of the consequences, rather, is more important than the knowledge of the consequences. I've been told if I do this, I'll get that, but I won't understand it until I do it and then get it. The experience is the best teacher. That's the knowledge loop. And then again, the ripple effect, effects can become a cause, as in the causal loop. The classic example I've used many times and is well known is in medicine when people say the number one cause of blindness in America is diabetes and the number one cause for gangrene and having our limbs amputated would be diabetes. But you see diabetes was an effect before it became a cause. It's a subsequent cause because of the ripple effect. So this is, what, this is how we end up with another group of needs. And that's why there's a oneness of disease and a uniqueness of disease based on the law of cause and effect and the ripple effect. 
So one die doesn't fit all is a half truth because it does fit a lot of us because it does satisfy our species specific diet does satisfy the first group of needs. But what if we're damaged? What if the environment's been damaged? What if we're not living where we're supposed to be and we're in an environment where we can't even get sunshine like we're supposed to? That's why we have another group of needs and that's why there's so much confusion in nutrition because if you don't understand there's two groups of needs, even when it comes to our food, you can be easily confused, not realizing that we do have a species specific diet that used to be our ideal diet in an ideal world when we weren't damaged and the environment wasn't damaged and we were living where we're supposed to be. But we don't live in an ideal world anymore. That's why we've got this other group of needs. We can actually become dependent upon eating the wrong food. As I mentioned in my videos, I've identified five main mistakes we're making based on five things we've mastered. And what did we do? Made bad, bad, bad applications to those things we mastered and applied it to our food. It altered our food. We worked backwards on this. The last thing we mastered are the chemicals. Shouldn't be growing food on artificial fertilizers and spraying them pe with pesticides. That's not natural. The next mistake we made ties back into the Industrial Revolution. And that's when we started processing our foods. One of the biggest mistakes we make to our foods when we process it. Going back to the next mistake, that's the Agricultural Revolution. That's when we started eating plants that were not biologically adapted to eat because we're not granivores. There are anti-nutrients in these foods that are telling us they're not meant for us to eat. But if we kill the food, we can kill that anti-nutrient and then eat it. That's the third mistake. The fourth mistake goes back to the eating of the animals. We don't have the anatomy to eat animals. Once again, we've got about a dozen anatomical characteristics that clearly determine what class we fit into. Why can't our experts figure it out? We're, we're all in denial. We're all, most of us making most of all five of those mistakes. Some of us might only be making the first two. That's the paleo people. They're eating the animals and then they're cooking their food. That's the first mistake. That's the biggest one. That's the one that started everything. That's what allowed us to make the third mistake. It even allowed us to make the second mistake on a consistent basis. We weren't eating animals consistently until we mastered fire and started cooking our food with it. Now we could hunt the animals to set the forest on fire and go off to the, let them run off the cliff and go down there and have a feast. That's how we used to hunt in the beginning. Didn't have that ability until we had fire and didn't start doing it consistently until around 50,000 years ago. So we put everything on a timeline. About 99% into our existence is when we made that first bad application to the first time we mastered fire. That's the one yard line. On the two and a half foot line, that's when we started eating animals consistently. It's about 50,000 years ago. And then on the six inch line, it's around 10,000 years ago. That's the agricultural revolution. And then these last two mistakes, they're like the one fourteenth inch of a line and the one twenty-eighth of an inch line. And I calculated those a decade or so ago, so that might need to, need to be tweaked slightly, but it gives you an idea of where all of our mistakes are coming from and how they all stem to the very first one. Because when we made that very first mistake of cooking our food, it altered our food. It allowed us to eat food we're not biologically adapted to eat. Now we're getting nutrients that we would normally make if we were only eating the plants that we're supposed to eat. There are level two nutrients in a lot of these animal products, and this is what this is why the, another reason why nutrition is so confusing. Because a lot of people, when they stop eating those animals, their body's not able to make certain level two nutrients that are found in those animals. Their body's atrophied, and they may need to supplement on a temporary basis. Because there's two groups of needs: cause and effect, species specific diet, ripple effect. You might have become dependent upon eating animal products. You might be living in a place where you're not getting any sunshine. How do you get your vitamin D? Taking a pill or eating it from an animal is not the way to go. We need that sunshine. We need to all move back around where we get a lot of sunshine where that shouldn't be a factor. How that's gonna work out <laughs> down the road, who knows if it never will. No telling how this world could transform if we woke up to the reality that we could correct one mistake and transform this planet and we'd have a really new normal. The kind of new normal they're proposing right now is insane. What we had before wasn't any good. And yet look how we long for just having that. It shows you huh, how far off we are as a species. You know, we're not even coming close to living up to our potential. 
in every area of life, physically and mentally, emotionally and, and spiritually or communally. It's really sad what this planet has turned into, especially when you contrast that to what it could be like and what it was long ago before we consistently started altering our food with fire. And why is that so bad? If you've ever watched my other videos, you know why it's bad. As soon as we cook our food, it's no longer living. It's not the same thing anymore. There are things in living food that provide us things that create living beings that don't have problems. Virtually all of our problems come from the unwise use of fire. Something so simple and so profound and yet we're in such a state of denial and we're so easily manipulated by the worst of the worst of us that one can't help but question if we're clever enough to overcome what I call this negative ripple effect. We're now the worst negative effect we have is we're not eating from eating these biophotons. We have the wrong mentality. We prey upon ourselves. We're not the best that we can be. And then the worst of the worst of us has kept us where we are. And you can't blame them. They're just a reflection of us. That's why everyone says we are the enemy. That's the idea behind Plato's cave. When you're in Plato's cave and, 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 and your friends come down and family tell you that this is an illusion, you gotta look back into the light. When you look back into the light, you're really looking in the mirror and it pisses you off to find out you're the enemy, that you are the one that was causing your own problems. But that shouldn't make you angry. It does because we don't understand yet, but that should be the best news in the world. Guess what? I found your problem, it's you. <laughs> all you gotta do is change. Ah! Wait a second, that's, all I gotta do is change. That's it, folks. And it's a simple change. The biggest problem, though, is we don't know what we're missing. And we're not going to think it's a fair trade. That's why just about every video I do encourages everyone to take a solitude vacation. Test an idea as time has come so you can see for yourself what you're missing. Please read the comments on my YouTube channels. People are sharing this message on their own, different days of their solitude vacation. Arthritis is going away. Diabetes is going away. Cancer is going away. Pain and suffering is going away. It's self-inflicted, my friends. That's the definition of a hero, if you remember, you regular listeners of mine, my audience. A hero is somebody who can solve a problem or problems no one else can solve. Most of our problems are self-inflicted. We're the heroes. But we're the enemies, too, because we pass our mistakes on down to our children. And then the worst of the worst of us control every major sector of human endeavor so they can lie to the masses and even though a lot of us are waking up and realizing what's going on as long as the, the masses the mob is watching TV they're going to be ruled by that and that's what rules us the mob rules folks I've done videos explaining the Kyklo cycles and how democracy goes through nine cycles in my video Satan's secret weapon I'll put a link down below in a pin comment where it all started when the mob became out of control because we stopped eating our biophotons, we stopped eating our species-specific diet. That's what caused our need for government. I've identified 10 subsequent needs. I explained in my video, The Ultimate Solution, 11-part video series. 10 subsequent needs because we're no longer eating our species-specific diet and we're not, no longer eating those biophotons and now we got the wrong mentality. We got an exchange mentality. We, do, we don't even understand the simple concept of reciprocal altruism where the more we give, the more we receive. It's so sad to see what kind of world we live on right now when we don't understand that. And we're not taking advantage of it. And since the majority of people have the wrong mentality, the mob is a problem. That's why we have these other 10 subsequent deeds. And six of which I've mentioned before are also problems of knowledge, like our government. It can be used against us. And that's what's happening right now. The media is being used against us. It's the same small group of people who own and control all of this. And what they're doing is they're controlling the mob. They made, us, they made us believe in absurdities. That's why we continue to commit these atrocities. And that's all they gotta do is, is get us to believe a couple false beliefs. That's pretty much their trick. Remember the people behind the curtain are magicians. It's a magic act. They wanna trick us and believe in a false premise. Here's a false premise. Vaccines eradicated all those diseases, infectious diseases. That's an outright lie. 
That's how they get us. We start with a false premise. Look, the vaccine's healed. And then, then they create the fear that there's something that's contagious. That's another one of those false beliefs they want us to believe in. And line up for the vaccines. And that's how they guarantee we're going to be so sick that even satisfying our needs won't do any good because we bypassed our number one defense, our skin, and we've been injected with toxins and poisons that are designed to make us sick. And I know that's hard to understand. If you don't understand who's behind the curtain, if you don't understand their MO, if you don't understand that we judge other people based on our own integrity and we can't imagine anyone doing the horrible things they're doing, then if that's, then you'll never be able to understand any of this. You really have to understand the MO and why this is the way it is. Why is there so much confusion in nutrition? Well, the people who are behind the curtain, they control what doctors learn, they control what nutritionists learn. A big reason why there's so much confusion around nutrition. They don't want us to know what our species-specific diet is and that we have two groups of needs so that when people say one diet doesn't fit all, that's not a full truth. It does fit for a lot of us, works for me. Might not work for you if you're way up north somewhere and you're not getting any sunshine. It may not work for you if you're 80 years old and you've been eating a bunch of animal products and now you become dependent on certain level two nutrients. Your body may have atrophy to a point where you're gonna have to supplement on a temporary basis until it gets back working again. And hopefully it will. And that's where the true art of healing comes into play. Science of healing has to do with the law of cause and effect. The art has to do with that ripple effect. The art of healing is tricky. How do we know when to stop supplementing our body because our body's atrophied? Some of you may never, ever be, may, 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 may never be able to overcome the effects of your ancestors. People of Norway ancestry, they've been eating so much fish for millennium, they've been getting a direct source of DHA, which is a level two nutrient. It's not found in plants. I've heard purslane has it, and there may be a couple other plants that might have a little bit of it, but otherwise, it's a level two nutrient healthy vegetarian animals are able to make unless you've been given a direct source of it for so long your body says I don't need to make it anymore and I'll atrophy and I won't do it and we may have inherited that weakness or we may have just earned it on a short-term basis and now we might have to on a short-term basis supplement that's where the art comes into play how do we know when to let the body start doing this again well, you got to pay attention don't you you have to realize health care is self-care my friends you know your body better than anyone else. Journal what you eat, keep track of what you do. Realize if you're new to all of this and you're trying to correct those five main mistakes and adhere to a raw vegan diet, you gotta eat a lot of food, which is great news once you understand that and are able to do so. Now in the beginning, you might not be able to eat eight or 10 pounds of fruit if you're an active guy like me. You might have to consume some of that in juice form might not be able to eat a really big five pound man salad, nor may you want to. In fact, I've cut back quite a bit on my big salads recently, and I'm juicing half of it and, drink, and eating the other half. But for people who are new to this, you have to realize that we shouldn't have to keep track of what we're doing. But we do in the beginning, because that's not how most of us start off our journey in life. Had we started our journey off in life the right way, we'd have known there'd be no confusion in nutrition. Everyone would know exactly what to do. They would go out somewhere, they'd take their morning walk and pass by their favorite mango tree and find a couple ripe mangoes, however many they wanted to eat, was ready to eat, and maybe they ate them then or, then or saved them for later. They'd eat every one of those and they'd pick out the best seeds and they'd go somewhere and plant that seed somewhere to further fruit trees growing everywhere. In fact, if we lived in an ideal world, as soon as we were born, we'd be born into a system that, was, that would require very little upkeep. Forest of fruit trees, permacultures are everywhere is what we should have that are pretty much self-maintaining. It would take very little maintenance to keep these going. And there's no reason why this planet couldn't be paradise if we realized how important our food is to our lives and realize that there's a symbiotic relationship between our fruits and us. And if our fruits were flourishing on this planet like they should be, we too would be flourishing. And all we'd have to do is just take care of those fruit trees.
we'd have a simple, easy life, be able to spend most of our time doing what we want to do. Since you were eating your biophotons, you felt the connection to everything around you. And you knew the only way you could make your life better was to make everything around you better. So that's what you would do everywhere you went, whatever your skills and talents were, whatever, wherever your love for this planet would be, is how you'd spend your day. And yours might be entertaining people. Your gift might be singing, your gift might be acting. Whatever it is, you get to spend your day the way you would want to spend it, making other lives better. And that's how life should be on this planet. If we could embrace our symbiotic relationship with fruits once again, we could live on a planet where every day you woke up, you got to do everything you wanted to do, and everything you did made other people's lives better, and everything everyone else did made your life better. And everywhere you went, that's what people were doing. You'd go on a trip someday and go down the river and see all these people beautifying the river. You'd see some places that didn't have any natural beauties and they'd have man-made beauties that surpassed some of the, man, the nature beauties. There's no telling what kind of paradise we could build on this planet if we put our energies in the right direction. And instead of acting like a, a bunch of weasels, our whole lives trying to earn a bunch of money and store it away for retirement. What a ridiculous way to live our lives. I'm gonna spend most of my day doing something I can't stand, only have a few hours a day to do what I want, work up till I retire, got about 10 more years of life in me and those are gonna be the worst 10 years of my life. That's what's so sad with most people. The quality of their life goes downhill quickly because of the, this damage we accumulate. You see, it, it isn't old age that gets us in trouble. It's the mistakes we make that gets us in trouble. The only reason why there's a relationship with age is because the longer we've been around, the more mistakes we've made. And what we don't eliminate, we accumulate. That's why we get so sick as we age. The elderly everywhere on this planet, most of them, are extremely filthy. Kidneys aren't filtering anymore. The lymph system, which is the bathroom that surrounds all their cells, are filthy. It's like you're, all your cells are swimming in filthy sewage system, it, which is seeping back into your cells. And now you got all these symptoms that doctors come along and name what you got based on where it's at and what stage the body's at in trying to deal with it. Whether it's the inflammation stage or ulceration stage or induration stage or the last stage where we have tumors in the system, fibroids and nodules and calcifications. I thought something was crawling on me. But it's all from being filthy inside. That's why when you take a solid at vacation, you clean out the main bathroom, and you see that proof within a, a very short period of time. But then you'll notice that everything now starts to get better because now you're cleaning out the other bathroom that surrounds all of our cells. I, I go into more detail about the disease process and disease mysteries revealed. I explain the causes and the solution. I explain there's two short-term self-limited diseases and then there's four long-term stages of disease. If you haven't seen that, be sure and watch that. Also watch what is uh, our ideal diet where I explain more about the art, about how we could be damaged and how we should look at our body as a chariot being pulled by dozens of horses. And those horses include both of those groups of needs. We've got those 12 essential needs. You've got an air horse and a water horse and a food horse, a sleep horse. Boy, that's an important horse. If that sleep is weak, you're not going to get healthy at all because we heal when we sleep. But then we've got that other group of needs, so there are some more horses if we're damaged. Oh, I've got a weak thyroid. I've got a weak pancreas. I've got a weak adrenals. I've got a weak kidney. I've got to support those organs. And then we also have 10 body systems that I go into more detail in what is the healthiest diet. And I won't go into that now, but those are also 10 more horses up there that we have to be aware of. Are they strong or are they weak? Do they need to be supported? So the good news for many of us is if we just satisfy those 12 essential needs, most of our problems go away. And if they don't, that's where we have to look at that other group of needs. How have I been damaged? How has my environment been altered? What do I have to do to make sure that I'm getting everything I need? And then what's the best place, or where is the best place to start? 
I always tell people, we want to change as fast as our bodies will allow us. So for most of us, that is a solid food vacation. Many people think, well, won't it be a whole lot better if I just gradually go into it? Yeah, it, it, that will work too. But the most important thing is to take the first step. If you're ready to take the first step now, and you think you need a transition, don't go into a transition. Because you might go through the transition and never take that first step. The hardest part of this journey is the very first step. It's making the decision. According to Buddha, he had an eightfold path to solve our problems, put into our suffering. First step is we must clearly see what is wrong. Well, I'm telling you what's wrong, my friends. We're not eating our biophotons. We're not eating our, we're not eating our species specific diet. Second step, according to Buddha, is we decide to be cured, which would be also the second step on the hero's journey. First step, did you have the ears to hear? Second step, do you accept the mission? Are you going to test an idea as time has come so you can prove to yourself that there's a whole other level of existence, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Don't you want to see that for yourself? Aren't you willing to take one week out of your life, that's all it takes, one week out of your life to prove what I'm saying is true? And you'll see all the proof you need. If you want scientific proof, you got it. Concrete, verifiable proof, you got it. You'll see it with your own eyes and smell it with your own nose and you won't believe how disgusting it is and how great it feels when it comes out of you. And then the amount that's in there is mind boggling and how long it takes. Read my comment section. There are young men in their 20s going three and four months, some of them, and, and still getting a lot of stuff out of them. Got a big, long 30-foot food tube here, folks. It takes a while to clean it out. And you know your body better than anyone else. So when you embrace this journey, when you take that first step, take it one day at a time. Don't be overwhelmed by thinking it might take several months. And keep in mind that every day is exciting. When I finally decided to go the distance back in 1994, the seventh time I did this, I said, look, John, let's go tell you stop eliminating. It was the most exciting experience of my entire life. I couldn't wait to wake up every morning. I was more excited as an adult at 40 years of age to wake up on my solid food vacation than I was at Christmas time to wake up at Christmas opening up presents. Seeing what came out of me was the best present I've ever given myself. Pooping out a 20-pound cesspool, which Victor Hugo refers to as a serpent, was the best present I've ever given myself. And if you want the best present that you could ever give yourself, take a solid food vacation, and I guarantee you, ow, you're here for a treat.